Uh, yes, I can. Okay. I can't read it, but I can see it. <laughs> Not true. Come to think of it, give me un momento, por favor, para... Excellent. Okay. Well, let us um, begin our class. Is this, how many more of these do we have on Wednesday night? Semester. Semester. This is the last one before the gathering. So will we have one in December? Okay, so there'll be three more after the gathering. Okay, but we. Counting tonight. Okay. So am I teaching this at the same time during the gathering also? Trying Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, during the Thanksgiving. Uh, we're not really going to be setting up a, a TV this year because we'd like to focus on the Lord instead of the Cowboys. Do you mind? You know, they are important to a small portion of people all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let's turn, let's begin with uh, Colossians chapter 3. We'll be doing what we've done the last several weeks, and what that is is that we have been um, going to different scriptures and examining them in light of being in Christ. But, but more importantly than that, <clears throat> we've been seeing their meaning in relationship to being in Christ. In other words, not just some teaching about in Christ, but the meaning of that and how it relates to our lives and the stability that it can bring for everything else that is to come. <clears throat> However, everything the Lord adds brings stability. So we... We press on, amen? We press on. Colossians chapter 3, and just a small portion there, verse 10 and 11. <clears throat> and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, uh, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And I read that for the next, ver the, not the verse here, but a, another verse in Romans so that we could see this. Uh, Romans 10, 12, if you'll turn there with me. <clears throat> and um, we've been over this, the, what we discussed in Colossians 3, 10 several times already. <clears throat> we had a chalkboard at that time. We drew on that chalkboard uh, the words neither nor. And in that we began to see a give and take over and over that there is neither male nor female, bond to free, Scythian, barbarian. Uh, uh, and the purpose of that <clears throat> was to go down a line of different comparisons or conflictians between man and woman uh, and uh, to see that there is um, uh, that oneness solves you know all of that because there's there's always been problems between Greeks and Jews there's always been problems between those who are the circumcision and uncircumcision uh, barbarian and Scythian bond or free um, neither nor is wiping out 
all conflict because it's taking us all to the cross. And then it's raising us up again, but in him. And he is the resurrection, therefore. He's not just the resurrector, and we've never talked too much about that uh, with this bunch. But, you know, because people say, well, you know, Jesus is going to resurrect all of us, you know. Well, and we, we see in Ephesians that we have been raised together in chapter 2. We have been raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the word hath is past tense, and it is a declared reality that, um, if, if you will, assures us of a physical manifestation of that. It's the way I've always shared it. Um, so Christ is all, and he's in all. And so now in Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so here you're getting it set up. You're getting it set up that there is no difference between the Jews and the Greeks. And then it's just stating the same Lord is over all, and not just all, all, but all that it'll share in just a minute. But my first point is that it is saying he, he is Lord over all, and we go, okay, so that's it. You know, all you got to do is um, call upon him, <clears throat> and he'll be your Lord, and that will be the settlement of it. Um, the same Lord, uh, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay, so the same Lord with us down here is rich unto all that call upon him. Um, so we have to see what that means. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, so now it's going to give you a contrast of on him and in him. Calling on him or believing in him, believing into him. <clears throat> okay, verse um, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So it's contrasting <clears throat> just merely calling upon the Lord and, and calling that salvation as contrasted with the end of verse 14, and how shall they believe in him? And this is what we've been doing. And so we'll, I, I've quoted a scripture in Ephesians, and we'll go there in just a minute, that really bears this out. But for the moment, Bear with me as we look at the difference between just calling on him for salvation and believing in him, believing that we are in him, believing that our salvation ultimately, or may I say it like this, our redemption ultimately <clears throat> doesn't just take place toward us, but it takes place toward us in Christ. But you have to call upon him first. And that's what these verses are trying to spell out. <clears throat> there is a calling upon him or calling on him, but you are calling on him in relationship to being in him. So let's read verse uh, 14 again. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? There it is. The next verse is going to talk about believing in him being, and, and not just at him. It's significant that it says in him. It is not just believing stuff at Jesus. Well, Jesus is on the throne above. And I believe you, I, we say this, I believe in you, but we're not really believing in him. We're believing at him. Yeah. I, believe, I believe that you, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> in my mind that song just keeps coming up. But anyway, I don't want to go there. <clears throat> and it's not always a happy thing. Um, that we're... We're, uh, we have been trained to simply think in terms of 
believe really in a certain sense in a Jesus 2,000 years ago. And 2,000 years ago, he did something on a cross in relationship to his death <clears throat> that took care of everything. I agree with that on this level. It took care of everything that needed to be taken care of so that we could be found in him, as Paul said, to be found in him, not having mine own righteousness now. It takes care of <clears throat> your sins. It, the cross took care of all, the, all of the, you know, the guilt and all of the shame and all of those things. <clears throat> there is no question about it. But that's not the end of it because then we had to believe in him, not just in him as a person, it, that we are in him and there is a reality that God, and see this, this is where you really need a chalkboard, but, but I give unto you my <clears throat> magical large chalkboard here and I draw again with your um, permission I sound a little more on a stage here with a little, <clears throat> a square. This is Adam. And then here we'll put a big cross. And on this side, we'll put a big circle. We'll name this square Adam. And we will say that we were born in Adam. In Adam, not just, you know. And Jesus took upon that sin nature, took it to the cross, put it to death, <clears throat> and, and in our resurrection, we are raised up in him and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, okay, in him. So that it's not like, you know, here's how, here, if, if you really tried to examine the way that it's explained by some people, I erase the board now, and we start over. <clears throat> Over here, I would draw a whole bunch of little atoms. They all have names. Randy, Susie, Betty, Bob. And you put a whole bunch of them over there. <clears throat> and you say, OK, they need, to, they need Jesus. So you draw a cross. And then you go, well, each one has to go and believe that Jesus died for their sins. And then they, in truth, the way most people explain it, you don't need a cross in the middle. <laughs> right? You believe in a cross 2,000 years ago in the sense of that, that it, it did whatever it did. <coughs> but usually in relationship to failures and sin and guilt and all that kind of stuff, and then you, you, you know, so you sort of walk past the, the cross, you know, each one of those little guys, those little Adam guys that have names, and they walk up to the cross and they say, okay, you know, I believe that you died for my sins. I'm, that's not believing into him, that's believing you died for my sins. And then they walk over here and Jesus, you know, meets them at the pearly gates and brings them in. I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't know what happens after that. You know, I do know in the version that the Bible teaches, we all were, were put to death at the same time. You say, well, how could that be? Well, you know, that's one of the things you're going to get to talk to Jesus about when, you know, or you could try now. <clears throat> but we were, we were all in Adam, and he took upon him, what does the scripture say? He who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So it's all, you're always going to, if it's going to pertain to us, it's going to pertain to us in him. Okay. And I do want to say this. My quoting of that scripture is not the exact way it's quoted in the King James. Because the King James, if you ever look at, uh, what is it, for, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, um, it, I felt like I had to unravel it. So I literally memorized it unraveled. So I admit it's not the exact thing. So if I'm going to hell for that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love the different looks I got on that one. And they were all such very do. It was really great. Thank y'all. <laughs> y'all are entertaining tonight. <laughs> so, um, so he takes all of us to the cross. And then when we receive Jesus, we do more than receive that Jesus did something. And we do more than receive Jesus came into us. We receive that we were dead in sins and trespasses in Adam, and he took us and he put us all to death in him. He, he didn't put us in his hands and go, okay, quick, nail me before they fall out. You know, He took us there and we died, and, and it's all past tense. And hath raised us up and made us sit together. Hath in the past tense. So that's something that you believe into. But it's only in the person of Christ that's, that it happens. See, it doesn't happen in you except it happens in you who is in him. Does that make sense? I mean, my, honestly, my other chalkboard would probably show this a lot better and it would stick in your minds, but you're going to have to go with this one. All right, so, um, so let's go to Ephesians 1 now so that we can start looking some more at these things. <clears throat> Ephesians 1 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places now let's just skip in Christ okay let's don't read that okay all right can we read it again but don't see the words in Christ okay Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Oh, whoopee, whoopee, whoopee. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We have got, I mean, I can just see me sitting on a little stool surrounded by mild, high blessings, you know, uh, in my little... Um, I want to call him a McMansion, <laughs> but we're going to go with just mansion. And, and uh, going, oh, Father, oh, you love me so much. Oh, you know, probably because I have Jewish blood. <laughs> no, he crucified you. Jews, Gentiles, everybody. Male, female, everybody, okay? So that he's not going to bless you with this stuff as if you're an individual over here that went through that process and, you know, and got on your heavenly cell phone and called everybody and said, it's great, it's easy to pass through. There is no cross. You just have to believe about something and it, or your sins and, you know, and then have a personal relationship with him. And he's going, you know, and this bugs people, but it's not about a personal relationship. It's about believing into him, which, yes, is personal. And, yes, you do have an experiential um, salvation. We're not denying that personally as you meet Jesus or as you come to faith. It's all, it's very personal, and it only happens in your time, everybody doesn't experience that at once. But we all come to the same truth. Christ is all and in all. That there's neither nor. And that now we live out his life without the divisions of all those other things that were going on. <clears throat> all right. So now let's read that again. And let's add in Christ, okay? All right. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you're in trouble right there. He's not even talking to you. <clears throat> it's about his son and what happened in his son. Amen? So aren't you glad you're not written in there? Because you would have been written out of it. <clears throat> Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ. Okay, so it is, you know, 
If you ever read a book by somebody who died and went to heaven, <laughs> and they came back and they said, oh, I want to tell you about it. Oh, it's so beautiful, and you get all this stuff. You know, it's like better than winning the lottery. It's just, this is so good, you know. And everybody is nice to me because I guess, you know, they could see the glory, you know. Um, no, 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 no. They totally miss Christ. At best, they would say, and I saw Jesus, and he was, he was on the throne. And he was beautiful. And he, he glowed and he had a big crown and everything about him looked royal. Uh, hey, you need to start reading the book of Revelation. He looks like a slaughtered lamb. And that they're all saying glory to the Lamb of God that was slain. Not to the risen one that, that's now, you know, God exalted that lamb for what he did. And he exalted it up and said, this is what I want ruling in you. <clears throat> this is what I want ruling up here, folks, if you will. You understand. It's actually in here, which makes it better. Because from there we can draw, as a, as a branch, we can draw on the life, nature, and resources of that nature. So anyway, so then, see, it, doesn't, it won't let you up yet. The next verse says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> you ready? Yeah. You ever heard of the, <clears throat> the uh, Armenians and the Scythians? <laughs> the Calvinists and, and the Armenians. <laughs> and the Calvinists believe that you are, everything is predestined okay you everything is predestined your salvation was predestined your life I guess is predestined all of that <clears throat> so and the Armenians believe that God gives you free will okay that God gives you free will so they argue back and forth because they use scriptures and the Armenians have their theirs all piled up here and the the Scythians, uh, Calvinists have all theirs piled up over here. <clears throat> and you got, you, you got ammunition. That's called ammunition. They're scriptures. Right. And, they're, and it's called ammunition against someone else. Okay. Where's the lamb? Anyway. <clears throat> so they say, well, you know, clearly right here it says in Ephesians that we were predestined uh, to be saved. Folks, it doesn't say that. It says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Folks, what was chosen before the foundation of the world was God was going to do all this in him. That's what the, he's the chosen one, and we are found in him. That's why Paul said, oh, that I may be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is the law. <clears throat> and so, the choosing here isn't choosing us to be saved. It's choosing us that if we are saved, it's going to happen in him. Look at it. Everybody look at it. Make sure you, you see that. Chose us in him. Okay? Now, think of the second chapter there of Ephesians again, where it talks about that he hath raised us up together in him. We've been raised up together in him and made to sit together in him. And, and we are, um, uh, our identity and all of that over and over and over is nothing is happening to us except it happened in him. Okay. So if you're going to be, um, I, I, I don't like using this phraseology, but <clears throat> let's just use it in relationship. Let me see if I've got the next ones. Yeah, I do. <clears throat> so we won't say that statement yet. Um, mm. Chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So God said, um, you know, 
How about this? Jesus said, blessed are you, Father. Blessed are you. Because you're going to bless them with all spiritual blessings in me. And so all of that's going to come together. It's, a, it's like, and Jesus is saying, it's like a gathering will take place. <laughs> but it's going to be in me. And that's where the party's going to be. Because there's going to be Christ being all and in all. Okay? <clears throat> so, um, uh, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So what is it saying that we should go? So we read that and we go, okay, gosh, I need to be holy and without blame when I get before him in love. You're in him. That's how you become holy and without blame because you're in him. Okay? That's how it happens. You don't, I, you know, I don't, I really haven't looked up that word before him, but um, if there's any, if there's any concept of being before him, it must include that the fact that we stand before him because we're in him, Amen. because that's the first, that's the first, in him is the first, okay, and he's the first, and the last, <laughs> and the beginning, and the end, anyway. So, you know, just from quoting those things, it sounds like he really is important to this whole thing. You know, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And so what happened when he was telling John that? John fell at his feet as though dead. Right? Book of Revelation. John falls at his feet as though dead. He goes, well, I guess I ain't in this picture anymore. Jesus reaches down, raises him up to himself. See, it's all a picture of that reality. <clears throat> so, um, let's go to John chapter 3. I thought it would be fun to, you know, you, to, to read uh, in light of in him, and we're talking about saved, redeemed, and all of that. I thought it would be fun to go to the one scripture that every Christian knows, John 3.16, but we'll start a little bit before it, okay? So, <clears throat> all right, John 3.14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him, in him should not perish. Who doesn't perish? <laughs> right. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, even, even when it doesn't say it, the word in is usually into him. Um, in fact, I, I know that it says that many times, believing into him. Okay? Believeth into him. In him should not perish. Who will not perish? The ones who believe into him, okay, have, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, well, I firmly believe that this is also talking about the cross because he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent uh, in the wilderness, that's a picture of Christ and him crucified. But he's saying that through the cross... You, believe, you can believe into him because that represent if it, that be lifted up, you lift it up. When the serpent is lifted up, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, this spoke he of what manner of death he should die. It also is a picture of the manner of death that we died. Right? The cross. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ liveth in me. And so, so you're not just believing in a historical event 2,000 years ago. You are believing in uh, a Jesus that went into that and took us into that and brought us forth in him. Does that make sense? See, I mean, one is, well, you know, okay, buddy, I, I want to I share the gospel with you. Well, what is it? 
Jesus, <laughs> well, Jesus died a long time ago. Check. Um, and uh, if you believe that, that he died for your sins, then everything's okay. Okay, I believe that. You said it. I believe it. Okay. Really? Is that really all there is to it? This is saying, John 3.16, folks, <laughs> saying, you know, that by looking at that cross, you are believing in the fact that you and him died. You are believing into him, and, and whosoever believeth into him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Through what means? Through the cross. Through what other means? Through being in him. Okay? Starts with that. And when I say starts with that, <clears throat> you know and I know, and I've probably got some scriptures here somewhere that will get into that a little bit, but that um, the, there was this constant thing. For example, um, Jesus, one of the, the main verses to me, although I think you would think of a lot more, is when Jesus said, at that day, you shall know. God, I still sends chills into me. Because Jesus is saying, there's a day that you're going to know that I am in the Father and he is in me and you are in me and I am in you. The disciples, if anybody could claim they knew Jesus, would be them. And he's saying, no, you don't understand. You know this flesh body. You know Jesus of Nazareth. But at that day, you're going to know a Jesus that I, you are in and I am in you. Right? And he's saying that to disciples. Okay? So, <clears throat> yes, there is the, the fullness of in him is I in you. You and me and I and you. The fullness or the manifestation, the manifesting forth of the reality that you're in him will be that he manifests that he's in you. Okay, so I need to say this. Now, there are some who believe <clears throat> when you say in him or in Christ and Christ in you. Okay, so we've talked about that before. In Christ, Christ in you, right? They say, first comes Christ in you, and then you're, you're in Christ. And I can understand where they get that from, but I believe the other way around. I believe it for one reason, Jesus always starts with in, in, you know, in me and then I in you. He starts with being in Christ. But I can understand where they're coming from <clears throat> because if you're, if you're, understanding of, of um, first being Christ in you is that you receive Jesus at salvation, then, yeah, I understand. Okay, I received Jesus at salvation, and now I come into the reality that Christ, that I'm in Christ. Makes perfect sense. Okay. And I don't know that there's a big difference in it, <clears throat> but for me, I'm not starting with me. I'm, you know, I'm not starting with me. The whole thing doesn't start with me. It starts with him, right? Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> he put us in him before the foundation of the world. But we have to eventually acknowledge that. But we, once we do, <clears throat> then we're in him, and then we can acknowledge you know, this actually happened before the foundation of the world. Now, that's my view, and I know it, I don't think it matters much. You know, so, uh, people who believe the other way can't, will go, well, you're just wrong. And I'll say, well, thank you. Yeah, I'm happily wrong. Don't change me, you know. <clears throat> so, but, I mean, that's it. That's really the truth. They, they will, you know, they can, many of them that I've come into, they make a big deal out of that. But to me, to do that, you're starting with an experience that you have. 
and Ephesians 1 doesn't start with our experience. It starts with something that God wanted done and settled and da-da-da-da so that it would be, uh, you know, as solid as Christ. Hallelujah. It's all in him. And then, <clears throat> then that life that we, yes, we eventually receive, but it, when we receive it doesn't put us in Christ. It, it's already true, and you believe that, and therefore you function as if in Christ, right? Then you begin to function as if in Christ because you are in Christ. But did it immediately come into existence at that point in you? No, it was in existence all along. You just accepted it. And then the manifestation is the nature of Christ, the person of Christ, the being of Christ. Then he begins to come forth and be manifested on the basis of that you are already in him and settled. Bless you. Um, <clears throat> because the other way, in my opinion, it means that um, nothing is true uh, you're just saved because, you know, but we're not even sure you're saved because you're not in Christ yet. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to sway you. You believe whatever order uh, that the Lord shows you. It's not important to believe what somebody tells you their order is, okay? Just stay in the word. All right. <clears throat> All right, so... Um, Again, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So this is a, a little bit like uh, the, I mean, I'm using the example uh, John used. This is a little bit like the wilderness and there's these serpents and they're biting everybody. Ha! Ah! And they're dying and stuff. And so... Moses says, what can I do? What can I do? And he says, take a, a serpent and put it on a pole and hold it up. Okay, anybody ever seen the medical symbol? I was a medic when I was in the army. And, you know, it's a serpent on a pole. And everyone that looks at it is healed or is not going to die. Okay. So everyone that looks at Christ crucified and the fact that that affects us in him, then the poison doesn't kill us. Why? Why doesn't the poison kill us? Because we're already dead. We're looking at his death and understanding that we're believing into that death. Not just believing that that death save somebody that is as wretched as he was before he said, I want Jesus. You say, well, no, he's not. He's, yes, he is. He's, you know, other than what is true in Christ, he's just someone who needs to grow up in him in all things. Right? I mean, did, let me try this with you. Did anybody get saved and then do something bad afterwards? <laughs> How many of you were perfect from that time on? Well, the, the, that's the proof right there, you know. All right, so uh, verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. So he's just saying, now I know that he used the word on him, but he's talking about, the condemnation of it. The condemnation. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed the name of the only begotten Son. All right, well, the name and all of that, it's not the, the reference here is to the serpent on a pole. And the reference is you've already been bit. And there's already a remedy. It's just being shown to you. Is that, is that true or not? Amen. How long ago did Jesus die? 
you know, 2,000 years ago. So, so there's already a remedy. You just saw it, you know, and believed into it. All right, Ephesians 1, 6. So here, this is a good one. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. So I, I intentionally put this one with that one. Is that good? Because we're going to see if this is, relates in any way. Could it relate? Could it actually be saying these things? I don't know. We'll have to look at it. Okay. <clears throat> Ephesians 1, 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Okay, so, so we know this one. We've discussed this one. Uh, but it's important to realize that um, God, when he accepted you, saved you, he didn't accept you on the basis of you. You say, well, okay, let's, let's do it this way. When you first come to him, what do you declare to him about yourself? That I am a sinner, I am messed up, I've done a lot of bad stuff. Oh, you know what, you're accepted. I love that. I love it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He says you are accepted in. Amen. Not yourself, but in the beloved. He goes, and you go, who's the beloved? <laughs> you know what I mean? We're talking about Jesus. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's something that God is saying in this scripture, your acceptance came not because you said you were a sinner or whatever, but because you are accepting the beloved and you are, as it were, believing into. You'll grow into that belief. I'm still growing up in him. Doesn't it say that in, in Colossians? Growing up in him in all things. Okay. I'm still, I'm still growing up into him. But I'm still in him. I'm still in the one. I'm not gaining. It's not like, well, I've got this, this little island, you know, it's this little tiny island, and I'm out in the middle of the ocean, and there's sharks going all around. And this part of the island is how much of in him I have. You know, and it's like, oh, Lord, I just want to believe, you know, that you have, you know, da, 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 da. oh, thank God, a little more. You know, oh, boy, you know, because I really getting close. You know, and, uh, you know, and then, oh, yes, Lord, after 20 years, I've got enough room I can... No, you're full and complete in him. Didn't scripture say that when we were in the Colossians class? It still says it. <laughs> you are complete in him. You know, so just, to, just to let you know, it still says it. You can turn over there and look if you want. You are complete in him. So this is all the fullness of the Godhead. This is all of the nature of Christ. This is... All the fruit that can come forth, I mean, the example some of you have heard me use is the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed, the seed. You look at that seed and you say, well, I don't have much. Well, in there is everything that you need in that seed, you know. And so you go, you know, and like I had an experience when I did this, someone was talking about the seed. And it was like we're, t we're I think they had one in their hand. And I said, you know, I see um, I see green. And they said, no, 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 this seed's black. And I said, no, no, I see green. I see brown. And I see, you know, different things. They're going, what are you talking about? And I said, I see leaves. I see bark. And I see, I see all that this thing is. All of it is there. It's all already there. It doesn't come to it. One day after you say, I'll put it in the ground, it's all there. Amen. And we are complete in him right. who is the head. Amen. You know, now growing up into him, because that's the scriptures also there in Colossians, that we're in him who is the head, but we have to grow up into him who is the head, into all things that are already there that are already there, okay? That's called security. 
We talked about this part too. You don't just believe that you're in him and that's enough. You must have, he's done this for you in himself. Now he wants you to let him spread out inside of you. Christ in you now. We're back to that. All right, so <clears throat> um, verse 7. Well, let's read 6 into 7. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein hath, he hath made us, he hath made us accepted in the beloved. He, he made us that. Made. That's future, right? <laughs> That's past tense. And it's once it's done, it's present and future. He hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Okay, so it's in him that we have redemption through his blood. Look at it. We have it. We have it. In him. You say, well, will he forgive me of this? No, he won't. He's already forgiven you. I mean, he's already died for it in that sense, right? He's already died for it. He does, every time you sin, he doesn't go, well, I've got I to gotta go take care of this, you know, and go hang on another cross. Once and for all, the book of Hebrews proclaims. Okay. So, um, uh, and, you know, just to make sure that you understand, because you can go in a lot of different directions with this, I'm not talking about once saved, always saved. How many of you have even heard the term, once saved, always saved? Okay, more than... More than I would have thought. Um, I don't believe in the in the basic teaching of that, because I do believe that we. Okay, I'm going to have to give again my picture of Calvinism versus Arminianism. Okay, right. because I was fighting with this in Bible school. I said, Lord, you got to show me, because you know. It, they both seem to be in the scriptures, and how can they both be there? Because they both seem to contradict one another, and da 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 da. So he showed me a train platform, and there's this platform. <clears throat> the train pulls up, and on the platform it says, uh, for lack of a better way, uh, bound for heaven. Okay. Now I'm not, you know, I know it's more than that, but I'm just trying to. I probably that's probably what I saw on it in my mind at first okay but <clears throat> this train is going there okay so I get on the train and you know it's making several stops along the way but you know I, I hang my head out and look around and it's still still bound in that direction I go praise God you know and all of a sudden it pulls pulls up and let's say that uh, you know I see a good looking girl I was single back then I see a good looking girl and I go she's really pretty and I'd like to meet her you know and oh gosh she's got a cute little dog and look at all this and I'm taking little steps and all of a sudden I step out of the train and oh what's your name you know and I turn and go <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I go down the road you know and uh on with my life uh, or, or another train's going the other direction and she gets on there and I said well, let me go with you you know so now I'm heading somewhere else. I didn't even look where I'm heading. I don't know where I'm heading. But I ain't heading there. Why? Because I used my free will to step out of being predestined. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, it's, you think about it. You, it, you know, it is, there's scriptures that say certain things. You cannot as it were, change the truth that you are in him. But you can step out of that and then you can, who knows where all that can take you. But I don't believe in once saved, always saved. Though. So <clears throat> you wrestle with it. I had to. All right. Um, <clears throat> in whom we have redemption. In whom we have redemption through his blood. In whom, see, we say through his blood we have redemption, don't we? Through his blood we have redemption. That's us. This says in whom we have redemption through his blood. It's still about him. Not just a work he did, but him. We're still, 
you know, we're going, well, you know, the, the, the common phrase is, well, it's a finished work. Well, you know, when Jesus came on the scene, folks, he didn't finish the work. He brought us into him. He never was a broken work. He never was an unfinished work. That's the way I saw it years ago. Jesus was never an unfinished work. We messed everything up. We did all that. But he never messed it all up. He's not an unfinished work. And so he doesn't stick his heart, uh, hands out of this in him thing and go, here, let me fix your stuff, you know. He did that at the cross, but he's not trying to fix it now. He's trying to get us to, to recognize that we're in him, to understand that so that we can live by that. So to, this is just my opinion, but to get off on an unfinished work and then now it's a finished work is still not pointing to Christ. It's only pointing to him what he can do, what he did do. Well, isn't that what basic Christians were doing anyway? It's not much more spiritual than just saying, well, he, he died and he did this and did that and he did that. Well, what Paul's trying to say is Christ is all and in all. What Paul's trying to say is you are dead. What Paul's trying to say is we don't even think in terms of a finished work because you're still looking at what needed to be finished. God, it's a finished work. Well, I don't, I don't have to be, I don't have to succumb to that. It's a finished work. Well, how about this? You succumb to the nature of Christ and the fact that you're in Christ, and then it won't even bother you. I know. I get a little carried away. But I think it's the truth. And I think that our focus so much of the time we get diverted. We're like the guy getting off the, off the train. We get diverted by him. We go over here. We go, okay, well, you know, what, what about this? And, da, da, da. and then we walk back past him again, you know, da, 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 da. And, and then we go, oh, Holy Spirit, tell me. And the Holy Spirit says, well, uh, it's, it's Christ. And you go, oh, you mean it's a finished work? You know, we, and then we walk off and say, oh, it's a finished work. Well, he's saying, no, it's Christ. He didn't come to declare the finished work. He came to declare and glorify Christ, you know. So we read, we read him being in him as a finished work when he was never unfinished. Does that make sense? Yes. And it, it, what only reason, reason why I make a big deal out of it, it has helped me. It has helped me stay focused on him. It has helped me not to get into a million doctrines that I can't understand all of them. And I'm going, well, how am I going to ever get all this? I mean, you know, how am I going to understand every one of these and how it all connects and how it da 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 da? You don't have to if you're in him. <laughs> you know, you're in the one that counts, you're complete in him. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Here, here we go. He's listing off what we have in him. Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Okay, so let's drop down. It all still keeps going, but let's drop down to verse 9. <clears throat> Ephesians 1, 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Okay, what's the mystery of his will? We already saw that, but it's being found in him. Okay, um, mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself. There's the mystery of his will. He purposed all of this in himself. He said, you know, what, what if one of the angels before, you know, after Adam and Eve sinned came up and said, Jesus, what are you going to do? How are you going to fix this? The devil. The devil. He done, he done messed all your stuff up. You know, I would say, you're the devil, <laughs> angel. What are you doing up here? No, I, I, you know, he just said, this has already been planned. My plan, whether they went into sin and fell or didn't, has always been that they would be accepted in me. That this whole thing, it's a mystery. The mystery of my will, the mystery of my will is according to what was my good pleasure 
to have it all purposed in me. You know, and say, so, well, what if stuff happens again? It won't. Because it would have to happen to me. Right? Because it would have to, I would have to change. And I don't plan on changing. And we go, can I be with him? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like this guy. Yes. Okay. That whosoever believeth in him, that's the next part of the verse. Uh, or, um, Oh, sorry. I am moved on here. Verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. So there, and that this is what his goal is, that we all be gathered together in that reality. Now, Again, I don't see um, in my chart that's still on the board with the circle over here in Christ. Years ago, I quit drawing little circles of us in there because it's him in us. You know, that's what it is. I mean, the, okay, so let me give you, uh, there's still more here, but let me just give you a closing picture that I saw with that. And that's in the book of Revelation, and it talks about... Um, the New Jerusalem. Well, do you all remember when that angel came up to John and said, have you seen the, the bride of the Lamb, the New Jerusalem? Have you seen her? And he goes, nope, I hadn't seen her. Would you like to see her? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Takes you on a high hill and shows you this, this uh, big city, which, by the way, he called it the New Jerusalem, the wife of the Lamb. The city is a picture of a, of a, as it were, a wife, the lamb's wife, that which is joined with him at the marriage supper of the lamb. And so it's talking about it, and, it's, and it says, well, and you look at it, and then you see Jesus in there, and he's sitting on a throne, and out of his throne is flowing <clears throat> all of this, and, and it's not just Jesus on that throne, it's who? The lamb, the lamb, it says the lamb, which, okay. So, what? Slain lamb. Slain lamb. <clears throat> so he's sitting on this throne, and out of it's coming this river of life, out of the enthroned slain lamb. And it's, and it's going out, and it's bringing healing to the nations and all that, and all the nations are going, oh, this is so good and everything, but we're the wife of the lamb. Well, where are we? New Jerusalem, and it starts describing the city that she, he's in, and it says that it has transparent walls and the, you know gold that's transparent gold and all that kind of stuff. And I remember when I looked, I mean, because I always try to put myself in that situation. I remember when I looked and I went, how am I seeing him and not her? Because in a regular city with regular walls, you wouldn't see him. Yeah. It'd be all buildings and all this stuff. It's all this transparent gold where you can look in her and you don't see her, you see him. Yes. You see him enthroned. You see the lamb enthroned. You see the lamb slain enthroned. You see all of it's flowing out of him enthroned, but it's also flowing out of her. Okay? So it's all, you know, we're, that's why I quit drawing those circles of us on the board because we're supposed to be transparent where you can see Jesus. Yes. We're in him. He's in us. At that day, you shall know it. Amen. And if and if that day hadn't showed up yet, then pray for it. Amen. You know? Say, Lord, I want to know this. I want to see this. I want to see it so clear that it's transparent. All is, all is seen clearly. And it's seen the way you see it. <clears throat> All right, so let's pray. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for him. <clears throat> Not just a finished work. Father, old things will pass away. And in him all things become new. And Father, in him, he's the newness of the new Jerusalem. He said, behold, I make all things new. He makes it that. I mean, he doesn't turn it into that. He's what makes it new. 
He's the newness of it. He makes all things new. And that also, Father, was in the book of Revelation. And that also was in the areas where he's talking about being the first and the last and the beginning and the ending and the end and the all, of, all of that, Father. That we get swallowed up of, of Jesus. That our focus and our hearts are drawn and we become not just Christians and not just the bride of Christ, but we want to be so joined to him that we're not seen, but he is seen. That's what John saw. He didn't know what it looked like. He, he'd been living on this earth. He'd walked with Jesus. He'd ministered. He was in his old age on Patmos. And he'd seen a lot in relationship to the, to the church on the earth. But Father, you brought him up. And you brought him to a place where he could look and see from your heart the wife of the lamb and yet not see her at all and he's the light of that city and the lamb is the light and all the things that it says of him that glorify him without her saying a word him being glorified in her so father we we will say with the angel we have not seen the wife of the lamb so she so please show us so that we can see him because that's what we end up seeing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We believe in him. And we believe if we're in him, then all this is already settled because he has said it. We thank you and we give you glory. All the glory. All the praise. In Jesus' name.